Hello everybody, this is Eddie Gabor. I am owner of Key Advisors Group and I wanted to shoot this video based on a lot of feedback I've gotten on Twitter and on our YouTube page. Uh, if you find value in these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this with friends and family, because our goal is to provide educational content that you can apply to you and your personal portfolio based on what you think is best for you and your family. So as we are approaching uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, we've seen a pretty sizable bear market bounce. Uh, when we were on Fox Business uh, last month, we did say that we finally did buy the dip with a portion of our cash in this bounce, uh, or I'm sorry, in that dip, we bought utilities, we bought healthcare, and we continued to buy treasuries as the 10-year bond continued to rise. Um, and now we're at this juncture where you have the VIX back into the 20s. You've seen a sizable bounce in tech. Uh, as well as the broader market. And people are asking now, is this the start of the new bear market? And what are you doing for positioning? I need to stress this to everyone that watches these videos, that the things that I talk about on TV is not advice for your family because I don't know your family situation. I'm just sharing with you our take on the markets, the economy, and what we're doing for our clients. So you can't take a two or three minute video and think that applies to your personal portfolio because everyone's situation is different. So I want to be as transparent as I can in regards to what we do as a firm um, in regards to how active we've been for clients. So now that we are going into the month of December, we do believe that this is nothing more than a bear market bounce. And we are seeing signals now that are uh, forcing us because of our process to double down on the fact that we think this market is going to test new lows in the coming months. So we are actually going to be sending out a video to our clients today, letting them know that we are going to be raising more cash going into the month of December. Here are the things that we are going to be doing from a tactical perspective. As I shared, we've been buying long dur longer duration government bond ETFs. As rates were going up and those bond prices were going down, we thought that was a great way from a risk-adjusted perspective to try to play a bounce. We didn't think that you would see a bounce in the market without a bounce in bonds, but our thought process was if the bounce in the market didn't materialize, the bonds would hopefully lose less if we were wrong. Fortunately, we got the bounce that we were anticipating and that means we got the bounce in bonds. So we've seen a sizable move in bonds and the 10 year treasury is well below 4% now. And so we're now gonna take some of those off the table in regards to our longer term treasury holdings. We still like it as a core asset allocation for next year. I think these long term treasuries next year potentially could be one of the best asset classes to own heading into the recession that we think that we're in now. It's gonna get worse over the next six to 12 months. But we want to play with the markets giving us, and we haven't seen the 10-year drop to this level in a while. The other reason behind this is we want to have as high of a cash position as possible heading into December. So here are the things that we've looked at that continue to signal a massive, massive, I shouldn't say massive because I could be wrong. So let me rephrase that. And as you can tell, these videos I shoot are unscripted. I don't have any teleprompter that I'm looking at. I'm just speaking directly to the camera based on what our thoughts are on this day. But the data that we're looking at points to the fact that we are going to have a sizable recession that is more than what the market is priced in, okay? And one of the big reasons why we feel that way is just look at the inversion of the yield curve. When we first started talking about the inversion of the yield curve and the twos and the tens being inverted, the bulls will say, well, that's all well and good, but the three month and 10 year hasn't inverted. They're finding a way or reason to be, continue to be bullish, even though that's been the wrong call. Well, now they have nothing to say in regards to the three month and the 10 year, because that's inverted as well. We're seeing some of the biggest inversions that we've seen in a very, very long time. So while this market was bouncing, the yield curve continued to invert more and more. So in our opinion, the bond market is signaling that there is a recession. And because of how big this inversion is, I think the recession, based on what we're looking at, is deeper than what many people have priced in. So we don't want to get in front of that and be overly bullish on any asset class that we think could get clobbered going into the end of the year and in the beginning of next year. So because we've had a big bounce in treasuries and we're so underweight equities, 
uh, we're going to sell treasuries to increase that cash because we wanna be big buyers over the next four months. So we have the inversion of the yield curve, and then we have what's going on in crypto. If anyone thinks that what's happening in crypto is not going to spill over into the broader markets, particularly tech, uh, we believe they're misinformed. The amount of wealth that's been wiped off the table because of what's happened in crypto is going to have dramatic impacts in regards to what we refer to as the wealth effect. And in my opinion, this is just getting started. You know, we're going to have to see what this spills into and what other areas potentially have liquidity issues. Make no mistake, the Fed is sucking liquidity out of the system. And we've been warning folks all year that the more they take liquidity out of the system, that your higher risk assets potentially are going to collapse. And we're seeing one bubble after another burst. The next big bubble next year that we think you're going to start to see some bigger drops in is housing. Okay. Housing has been one of the last asset classes that have kind of held up. Now, we're, we're starting to see the housing data really deteriorate. Um, and now when you look at 30-year mortgages at 6 to 7 plus percent, I mean, you don't have to be an economist to understand the impact on that. Let's just use some common sense. If you double the cost of capital for buying a house, you're going to have demand come down and you should have prices come down. And think about this factor too, going into next year. If you own a house and your mortgage is at 3% or 4%, are you gonna sell your house and get a mortgage at six or seven? I think we're gonna have a strange dynamic next year where you may not see a big supply of housing on the marketplace, but you could potentially see a 15 to 20% drop in that asset because housing demand is gonna deteriorate even though the supply may stay flat because no one's selling their house. Uh, and so when you look at the fact that someone may have lost a third of their money in IRAs, uh, they had crypto that they got wiped out in, and now one of their largest assets being their home is down 15 to potentially 30%, that's gonna have a big change in the consumer behavior and what they spend next year. So this is why we think next year the economy will be worse than what it is this year but the stock market will be better next year than it is in 2022. Yes, you heard that correctly. Uh, the market is a forward-looking indicator in our opinion. And so right now, and anything can change, we have a very strong conviction that the bottom will be in sometime in the first half of next year. So I will welcome the day when I become very, very bullish and our firm becomes very, very bullish and we start buying these equity style factors that we haven't owned all year. Uh, so we will be buyers next year unless something changes. So keep in mind, just because the economy is not going to bottom next year doesn't mean the stock market won't. We believe the stock market will bottom as the economy continues to deteriorate. So the last thing I want to touch on is this whole narrative with the Fed. Okay, How many times this year have talking heads come on TV and said, this is it. Inflation's cooled off, the Fed's going to pivot, and you get this market rally. Every single one of these bear market rallies this year have sucked investors in, and then its bottom has dropped out, and we've made new lows. Please don't make your total investment strategy based on whether the Fed pivots or not pivots. I think we're heading into a new era, where we'll call it a new normal, where this whole free money and the Fed dropping rates to zero is not going to happen. In our opinion, what the Fed's going to do is they're going to go from raising rates, and we think they'll raise rates in December. We think they're going to raise rates again next year because the inflation data that we're going to get in December is going to pour cold water on this narrative that the Fed's going to pivot. And then when they are finally done raising rates, they're just going to stop. They're going to pause. Understand, there's a difference between pausing and cutting rates, a substantial difference. Now make no mistake, in our opinion, when they do decide to pause, you're gonna to wanna to be in equities because equity markets, even regardless of what the economy is doing, we think will rip in a big way. We'll have to wait and see what happens after that rally, but again, if you kinda of think of the timing of how our playbook is, it should coincide with when the Fed gets to the point where they're gonna pause. 
And by the time they pause, it, we're going to be clearly in a recession. The consumer is clearly going to be in a tough spot. And equities will be at lows that we haven't seen. So we do strongly believe that you're going to see the S&P sometime in the next three to four months hit a new low before we go to new highs. So the game plan is cash is king right now heading into year end. Uh, there's a lot of warning signs. Again, crypto, the Fed, inflation, uh, the consumer. I mean, look at the retailers and what they're telling you in their earnings report. Again, don't look at headlines because sometimes headlines don't tell you the true story. Look under the hood, do your own due diligence and research and find out what the consumer behavior is. This wealth effect is going to have a big impact on the economic data that's going to come out over the next several months. So again, risk management is, in our opinion, one of the best things that you could do is have a process to risk manage your portfolio, whether you have 50 years to live or 10 years to live. Just because you're a long-term investor doesn't mean it's okay to lose a third of your assets. You want to get out of the way of that freight train if and when it happens, if you're able to do so. Because those that are going to really benefit from this market are going to be those that are able to buy the dip when we hit new lows. And if you're positioned to do that, hopefully you will have a strategy that will provide you some long-term growth that will allow you to exponentially grow your wealth. So again, I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you what we're doing for our clients, why we're doing it the reasoning behind it, and how we see these next few months play out. So again, I hope you thought you got some value out of today's video. Have a great, great day and make it a winning week for you and your family.